Wrigley's Chewing Gum. The dominators of the shelf for hundreds of years, and the gum you see around town hundreds of times. Whether that be the gum stick to desks, wrappers crumbled up on the floor, or when you take a new pack out of your backpack, everyone becomes your friend. William Wrigley Jr., a gentleman in the early 1890s with his dad, William Jr., I mean, William Wrigley, who were selling soap as a way to make some money. His dad had two factories that they had, and they were selling these small little boxes of soap, but soon they realized they weren't making enough cells. So then they were thinking of an idea. What could they do? That was when they thought of gum. Their idea of gum was because it was cheap, compact, and very small to add to the box. And they had a little sliver on the right side of the box that they could add the gum to. So once they decided to do this, they were putting up advertisements for their gum that comes with the soap for free. But soon, once these two gentlemen realized, his father and son, they realized that they were making more cells because of his gum. And they made spearmint and peppermint. Once they realized this, they started making tons and tons of advertisements. I mean, it was all over town. They had it on theaters, diners, everywhere. It was even on the sides of just random buildings. Some people even put it in their yards to display it. But this ended very soonly. They realized that they were running into some problems. Some of these problems were being some of the factories started to burn down because of poor maintenance. They were focusing on this gum too much, and their factories were not up for the gum. It was only made for the soap. And also, they realized some of their advertisements started to come down because of that, and they were slowly coming out of business. But it, was, it wasn't until 1907 that they had a financial panic, which really helped them out. Advertisements were cheaper and easier to make. They expanded, made more factories. They were now at 12 factories, just producing gum only. They completely trashed the soap. This really brought their profit up. Another thing that William Wrigley did was show that his gum could be like medicine instead of candy. He showed that if you had a piece of his spearmint gum, it could help not only soothe nervous stomachs, but also stressed out minds. And he actually convinced Americans that this would work. They kept doing this until 1914 where they were making millions upon millions selling his peppermint, spearmint, they had more advertisements and they're going to more audiences and they're going to more cities. They were really successful at this point. But once again, they hit another downslope. People were getting tired of the same flavor of the spearmint and peppermint. People wanted more instead of just mint. So what could else what else could they do? This is where they decided to make juicy fruit, a flavor that has no labeled fl flavoring but had this juicy taste. And everyone really enjoyed it because it had that mystery to it because no one could find out what it would do. And they even sold it cheaper than their spearmint and peppermint. So it got more sales. William Wrigley Jr. kept doing this and making millions upon millions. It wasn't until January 26, 1932 that he passed away. This is where the business stayed in the family and made some of the flavors that you know, like Hubba Bubba, Extra, Eclipse, Five Gum, which I didn't know Wrigley owned that, or Orbit, which I also had no idea that they owned that. Mar in 2015, Mars bought the company and made many different variations that you know today, like the, the Extra 35 Pack, the Extra Gum Refreshers, the Starburst Juicy Fruit, Hubba Bubble Gum, and Watermelon, as well as the Dessert Delights, which I am not a fan of, but some people are. This brought their profit up by 14.1% because they were making cheaper material out of the packages and it, they were hauling it cheaper as well. So they were able to bring down the price on the gum because they were making everything cheaper, which just made it more of an impulse buy for people to buy in the store instead of waiting on it and adding it to their purse or backpack. Thank you for tuning in today where we talked about the history of William Wrigley Jr., the rise to fame of his business and himself, as well as their plans for the future to keep inspiring people and buying their gum.